what I'm doing is if you zoom in here, look at the seam map, I got, this is your higher stuff right here, areas that they're gonna wanna spawn. Out here we got deep water, so I'm looking for vertical stuff that's kind of right in between, and then these little ditches, these little deeper holes, full of bigger rock, rock piles, broken rock, sand, you know, and it's the area where these fish are funneling in from this deep water and just kind of staging here to get ready to spawn. And that's something about my sea map for sure that just kind of makes those areas kind of pop out at me. Now maybe I'll kind of cruise around the reef and hit some of these other ones here. And you can just kind of see as you come off and into these deeper ditches, you got a bunch of busted up rock. It comes up and down, up and down. Those fish can use these broken rock areas and just kind of slide in until they hit a little stopping point and they all huddle up. Whenever you can get a lot of smallies around each other, especially this time of year, uh, you're gonna have a super fun day. Basically, I'm just kind of letting the wind move me around. You know, wind's my friend this time of year. The fish are lethargic, I want to fish slow, but at the same time, they're in big school, so that's a lot of eyes. So I just kind of want to move through the area and let that wind be at my advantage. I'm looking for bigger, you know, real rockier terrain, areas for groups of fish to you know, a big crack in the rock, something like that, for these fish just to kind of hold up in. And I'm using the active target, looking for them, but instead of sitting there and they're relatively shallow, you know, I'd say we're fishing under 12 feet. They're right on the edge of the reef, you can see it. They got one on that side, see that hard reef? They're right on the edge of it. We're just kind of working the outside, hopefully for a bigger one. Is that him? Yep. That one feels better. That one feels better. That feels real good. Please be a bass. I really want that one to be a bass. A big swimmer eater. Big swimmer eater. That's why you hit some of the more known stuff with bigger schools right now. And hope we can just get these bites. Oh, it's, oh. That's a freaking dog. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a big one. That's what you come to Lake Mille Lacs for. Hook just barely came out, but it kept it on. Oh, cast tackle, golden eye, bottle spawn, exo swimmer. Uh, somewhere in the five and a half vicinity. All right, XO swimmers, you know, they come in different size. These are my standard ones I carry around four inch, 3.25 inch. In this case, this is the one I'm throwing right here. You know, the new 2.75 inch. Really excited about that. Um, I just carry a variety of different colors. You know, you can get really carried away with it, but I just, I pick three, four, five confidence colors and, uh, and go with that, you know, and keep it pretty simple. And at the same time, different sizes to match different hatch seasons. Since it's spring, it's early. I mean, we're talking just ice out. Anything that is around is gonna be really small. They're looking for little meals. They don't want to move a lot. The little tail kick here on this 3.25 Exo Swimmer always gets the nod when I'm using a really light jig head like that gold knife in the eighth ounce. Hmm. We filmed that on the floor. Be a walleye. Whatever it is, it's not very big. It must be a walleye. Doesn't want to come up, no, it's small. They come in all sizes. Springtime of year. Let's talk about the setup. We talked about the golden eye here. What about the rod and rail? You know, yeah, it's a spinning setup, yeah, it's finesse. But it's not, you know, I'm using 10 pound Shimano Mastiff fluorocarbon to 10 pound Power Pro SSV2 braided line, uh, using a long leader with an FG knot, G Loomis NRX Plus 872S jig worm rod. There's nothing finesse about this rod, 7.3 medium. It's my absolute favorite spinning rod that's ever been made before. And it's the one that I use the most, outside of some specialty things like the hair and, you know, a straight up 
Great Lakes drop shot rod, something like that. Otherwise, it's, I'm running the 872. Uh, again, just a ton of backbone, sensitive tip, maybe the best spinning rod ever made. And I'm using a 4000 Shimano Accents, uh, like I said, a 4000 size. It's got a bigger paddle handle, wider reel, um, picks up line quicker, doesn't hold as much line, super light, super durable, but you know, they hit this thing and I'm gonna stick them and I just take control of the fight immediately. There's nothing finesse about it. I'm hitting them with heavy tackle, just in a finesse style. So definitely in the setup for this. That's why I use 4,000 size reels right there. Faster drag pickup, bigger handle to get at. That's another toad right there, boy. Yeah, look at how fat they all are this time of year. Yep, that was another one. Just kind of see the school sitting up there. You know, I'm not using the active target so much for actually pinpoint cast, catch that fish, but I just see them flickering out there, you know, flickering out there amongst a bunch of, just a big rock pile. Anyway, nice one, so I'm gonna go catch another one. Lots of them up there. Can't tell if he's big or not. It might be. Yeah, he's a good one. That don't never get sick. I'm tired of. until you wear them out. Seriously, these are supposed to be little bass. But right now, they're all pretty spawn-like. It's been a good winter to them. <laughs>